and they made an art out of restoring, restoring broken things. An ancient practice, which I'm not going to butcher the name of it, but it really means got golden joiner or patch with gold. It's an age-old custom of repairing craft pottery with real gold. Not only fixing the break, but greatly increasing the value of the piece. The heart of it all is turning what is broken into something beautiful. Cherished, piece, cherished pieces by sealing the cracks and the crevices with lines of fine gold. Instead of hiding the flaws, the artist highlights them, creating a whole new design and bringing unique beauty to the original piece. The pottery actually becomes more beautiful and valuable in the, in the restoration process because through it was, because though it was once broken, it not only has history, but a new story. So I'm gonna say that again. The pottery actually becomes more beautiful and valuable in the restoration process because though it was broken, it not only has history, but now a new story. So our scripture today is from Ecclesiastes 7, 3. Sorrow is better than laughter, for by a sad content, the heart is made better. And this I could never understand. I, I couldn't even put my mind to it. Like, how is sorrow better than laughter? It's like saying that going to a funeral is like having a party. Like, that does not make sense to me. Um, so in the New Living Translation, it says, sorrow is better than laughter. For sadness is refining influence on us. For sadness has a refining influence on us. So today I want to talk to you about how brokenness equals healing and transformation. Tom, um, Dr. Tony Evans says three main points about brokenness. He said that brokenness is a way to say yes to what God wants over what you want. Two, he says, to be broken is a decision to humble yourself and acknowledge your need for help. So that's humbling yourself in the sight of God and acknowledging that you need God to help you, to help you um, change bad habits and to come into your heart and to refine your heart, refine what you see as, uh, what you see as good. He's trying to take those things out of you, those filthy things out of you so that you can be made whole. And brokenness, and he also the third point is that brokenness is God stripping you of your self-sufficiency and getting rid of your pride so that the life of Christ can be made manifest in you. So how I leave, so I answer this question, how can God fix something or someone who is not broken? So how can I try to come over here and fix this table? but it's not broken, it's nice and sturdy, so how am I supposed to fix it if it's already standing up? It's already doing its job, it has its purpose. So how can God come into, how can God fix something that is not broken? And unless you, and God is such a, I always hear that God is such a gentleman, so unless you bring your brokenness to him, he will not come into your life and invade you. He will not come into your life and cause you to hurt in certain ways that you don't want him to like touch those, those, um, parts of your heart that is just very sensitive, those areas of your life that is very sensitive, he, he won't do that. So you have to go to God and be like, here's my brokenness, God. Sometimes God puts us in certain situations to break us so that he can repair that certain area of our life. Brokenness is a beautiful thing, so start embracing it. So my most biggest experience with brokenness and where I realized that brokenness um, brings healing and transformation was in 2011. That was like a very testimonial year for me. But a recent incident that happened to me was actually happened a few, um, two weeks ago where um, I don't have the best, don't give you some backstory, I don't have the best relationship with my parents. So, and like financially, they can't really support me. So I go to school full time. So I'm taking six to seven classes, and then I, I'm also working 35 to 40 hours, you know, full-time job to support myself, to pay my bills, to get myself through school. And financially, my parents are not able to do that for me. They don't 
send me money or do this and that for me. Like, I'm taking care of myself. And I learned that at a young age that I had to just grow up. So um, a few weeks ago, well, before I came to college, my mother and I had an agreement that I was going to file myself on my taxes and that she was no longer going to file for me. And my parents are divorced, so the way that they split it, like I would, like they split, there was four of us. So my, my father got um, my three older siblings on his taxes, and then my mother had me, and she had other two kids um, that weren't for my father. So that's how they split it. And me and my mom had a deal from since I started college that I was gonna file for myself because you know, and when you do your tax refund, you get um, school credit back and from what you were working. So I filed my taxes as single and the way I've been doing it for the past few years. And then um, the amount of money that I'm gonna get back was $2,000. So I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't know I was gonna, I wasn't expecting that much money. And I'm not the type of person that takes money and then like, you know, go buy a new Mercedes Benz or something or <laughs> something like that. But I put it towards bills. So my car insurance is like coming up and it's due and I'm like, oh praise God, like I'm praising God when I see the amount that I'm suspect I'm expecting to get back. So I'm praising God and like I can pay my car insurance and fix this on my car and this and that and that. So um, later that day, the eight I do my through H and R blog, they send me an email saying that the the IRS had rejected my tax refund. And I was like, what? Like, I don't do no fraud type of stuff. I do it legally, so I don't know like what's going on. So I went and I checked it out. And it was like somebody, it said, um, your social is on another person's taxes. And it was like, if you were dependent, you had to put that on your thing. And I was like, oh yeah, I forgot about that, whatever. So I put that on there. So my ref my expected refund amount was went from two thousand to five hundred dollars, mm -hmm. and immediately I was like completely broken and I was just furious. Like I was so angry and mad because um, a few days before I did my taxes, I had called my mother to see, hey, like okay, did you put me on your taxes just to make sure? And her phone was out of service, and that's something that's not unusual for me. Because she just, like financially, I know she can't take care of me, but there's just like so much trust issues with me and her relationship. So, um, but the, the day I did my taxes and I found out like I was getting less than what I was expecting, I was like, oh my gosh, she filed me. I text her and I was just like, I kept texting her, texting her, texting her. And she was like, yeah, I did put you on my taxes. And I was like really angry. I wasn't saying anything filthy, but I was just telling her like, like, oh my gosh, like, you don't take care of me. Like, you know, just, I was really angered. And that's when I realized, like, I was sitting there trying to calm down because I had homework to do, and I just couldn't concentrate on anything that was put in front of me. Like, I was so angered to the point where God, like, the Holy Spirit just hit me and was just like, I just started saying, um, Father, forgive me, Father, forgive me, Father, forgive me, Father, forgive me. Father, forgive me, Father, forgive me, because I was broken. But even though I was broken, that spirit of anger should not have been so heavy upon me to where I, the way that I was acting was not me. So I just kept asking God, please forgive me, please forgive me. Then I started releasing forgiveness on my mother. Release forgiveness, I was like, forgive you, I forgive you, mom, I forgive you, mom, I forgive you, mom. And it was really, was like, a, like a burden was like lifting up off of me. So it was like really like right now even this still like it's really a touchy subject. But what I want you guys to realize is like through your brokenness there's a process that God is trying to walk you through. He's trying to walk you through the process. So like he's trying to walk me through the process of forgiving my parents for all the years of neglect that I felt that I didn't know I had all this harvest unforgiveness in my heart, but I'm walking through that process of forgiving them. And um, so 2 Corinthians 7 verse 10 says, For godly sorrow produces repentance, leading to salvation, not to be rejected, but the sorrow of the world produces death. And in the Amplified Version, it says, For godly sorrow that is in accordance with the will of God produces a repentance without regret 
leading to salvation, but worldly sorrow, the hopeless sorrow of those who do not believe produces death. So the sorrow that I was feeling produced uh, repentance in me, where I was just asking God to forgive me, and I was also moved, like forgiving, releasing forgiveness to my on my mother. And um, when I was broken by my um, by the actions of my mother, I became angry. And I remember as I was just saying, I forgive you, like God forgive me, I forgive you, God forgive me. And just repeating those things so I can just let it go. I remember the, the word of God and it says in Ephesians to don't let the sun go down on your anger. And in James it says to be slow to anger because anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. And in Colossians it says that I must rid myself of anger and of rage and we also see throughout the Bible, mainly in Proverbs, where, this, where it says that um, those who get angry are fools and those and, th and that they're unwise. So just, I just want to encourage you guys to just allow God to walk you through that process. Like allow God to really break you because there are like this unforgiveness I didn't know I had in my heart. So there are certain things that God has to reveal by break you so that he can reveal to you like hey this is here and I need to get it out so I have I realized that I have been broken all my life but I know through my brokenness there is greatness God breaks us to lift us up and God kicks us down to pick us up God does God does wonders with nothing when you feel broken from a heartbreak a fallout with a friend from anything do this one thing to be made whole and restored Run to Jesus. Show him your brokenness. Give him your, the permission to enter into your heart and rearrange and throw out some things. I might be weird, but I am always happy when I feel broken. Yes, I am in pain, but in 2011, I learned that brokenness makes you stronger, that pain doesn't last always, and that joy comes in the morning. When I am broken, I fall to my knees. And I simply say a prayer that's, Lord, I am broken. My heart is in pieces. I am in so much pain. Lord, take this brokenness. Take it. Reveal to me. Fix whatever it is that you got to fix within me. So break me and make me a better person. Lord, I need you. I know when I am broken, I can do, I can do this one thing. To go to the creator personally to be made whole and whole again, to be transformed. Brokenness to me means breakthrough. Going higher, going deeper, becoming more and more anointed. Brokenness is a beautiful thing, so start embracing it. Remember, when you are broken, run and cry out to Jesus. And I leave you with this. True brokenness is a tool by which God brings his wandering sheep back into his loving arms. And I'll repeat that again. True brokenness is a tool by which God brings his wandering sheep back into his loving arms. So Lord, break me.